Time now to talk a little hoop. And joining us right now, my main man, covers the Sixers. Great basketball show. The uh, Love it. Devon Givens, all P-H-L-Y basketball with our friends, uh, we, we, uh, Kyle Newbeck and Derek Bodner. What's up, brother? What's up, man? Good morning. How you doing? You know what? I got to tell you, I'm surprised as all get out that the Denver's off the mat. I, after those first two games, when I saw that defense and how they hounded Jamal Murray, I was like, this is styles make fights. They're not coming back. I figured, well, all right. They, they get one. Murray goes off in game three. But last night, I thought it would be a T-Wolves night, and it was not. Especially how Denver, uh, pardon me, how Minnesota started that game. They jumped on them early. They had, they had a pretty decent lead on them. Of course, nothing too sizable uh, that early. But uh, the way that they played early on, they took the gut punch Denver did, like a champion does, and they decided they found a way to come back. And I thought I thought the real tough part for Minnesota was they were down big eventually in that first half. They cut it to seven. And then that final 20 seconds or so oh, yeah. of that of that second quarter going into halftime where they they uh get a three pointer from I think it was Contavious Caldwell Pope on the left wing. And then Anthony Edwards, who could have held the ball for the remainder of the possession before going into halftime, thought he went a little bit too early. Screen set by Gobert. He splits it. Ball goes off of Gobert's foot. They go the other way. Michael Porter Jr. gets that dunk. That's five quick points now for Amen. them. Right? And then the turnover from Alexander Walker trying to go full court or at least half court. Jamal Murray with that that amazing shot along the sideline there from half court uh, to nail it. So that's it. Eight points right there in 20 seconds to nothing where it didn't have to be that way. Of course, you would maybe we would have been down 10 after that call. Well, Pope three pointer. But, uh, but so your points, right? I think that I think that's where they lost the game. I, I think your points right on because you go from 10 to 15, like 10. Yeah. All right. 15 is is mentally a difficult number because you saw them. They, you know, they were going to run, and then every time they were going to run, Denver hits a three, and yep. they got it they got it inside single digits a couple times. But, you know, it's one thing to be down 10 and make those runs, and now you make them sweat because now all of a sudden it's a inside five, it's it's three, it's four. Then, then the crowd's into it. Then you can tip it. But they never got to the point where they could tip, completely tip it. Yeah, because to your point, when they were down there in that second quarter, I'm sitting there watching again. The I'm saying, okay, you just have to get this to single digits. Get to about eight, seven points somewhere around there. And they did. They got it to seven. Call what Pope hits that three. That's not that's not impossible coming out to start the third quarter. But when you turn that into 15, as you said, and, and then come out in the third quarter where they're just trading baskets. They hit a three. Anthony Edwards does. Carl Anthony Towns hits a three. Michael Conley hits a three. But on the other end, they hit a three for Denver. They get a two-pointer, and they're just trading buckets. So you, while you're chipping away and you're getting that one point because you're knocking down the threes, the defense is not stopping Denver on the other end. So uh, that was a tough one, and I agree with you. I, while I didn't think they would sweep them, I know we discussed it a little bit on our show, I didn't think they would sweep them, though. I thought they would get a win, come back to – come back to, to Denver game five with an opportunity to close the series out. Now, Denver's right back in this, and both teams have won on the road. So we'll see if Minnesota can keep that up tomorrow night for game number five. But Denver has figured something out now where they have been able to, to get back in, into this series. And I also thought this, too, when Minnesota did cut into that lead in the fourth quarter and last night, I was wondering when – the coaching staff, since Chris Finch, Chris Finch is down and he has his assistant really on uh, Roman the sideline, I was curious when they were going to bring Nas Reed back in because it was very evident with three possessions in a row where Rudy Gobert, they, Anthony Edwards tried to hit him on a, on a roll, which is difficult because that's not really what he does, but you understand you're trying to keep him engaged, but it was too late in the game to be passing him the ball so far away from the basket. That's one. Then he had an offensive foul. Then he had another turnover. So it was three straight possessions where you couldn't afford that while you're chipping away and trying to, you already had yourself yeah. in a big hole. It, it, that that one was tough. So I was wondering when they were going to bring Nas Reed back in the game, just for more of the offensive punch, even though Nikola Jokic had it going on.
Yeah, yeah, he did. Speaking of, we're talking about prodigies, and I mean, my God, Anthony Edwards, even in the loss, and I know a couple turnovers, yeah. but he yeah. he's just ridiculous. I mean, he's taking his game to just another level, and these playoffs have been that coming out. Like, we all knew how great he was and how talented, but I'm sorry. Like, he, he's on another level now. He's 22, and it, it's it's to the point where – He's such a dominant force. I mean, he's he's uh, special. It's undeniable uh, how talented he is, how good he is. He's going to be one of the faces, if not the face of yeah. the NBA in the next two to three years because of how good he is. And look what he's doing also. He's doing that in Minnesota. That was supposed to be Carl Anthony Towns' team. It yeah, was for a very over. long time. And you could see it very clearly even as early as a year ago that oh, this is really going to be Anthony Edwards' squad. There's no question about it. And I, I do give Ant Carl Anthony Towns credit because uh, he accepted that eventually, just handing that over. Uh, he tried to hold on to it as long as he could, but the alpha on that team is Anthony Edwards. He's a three-level scorer. When he's dialed in defensively, and he is that good where he is. You can argue, again, when he does that, that he's the best two-way player in basketball just because of how talented no, he is. I imagine Kobe with, with that stuff. He, he has it all, man. He really does have it all. And and the other part, of course, this season is not over with, but he's going to be on Team USA. He's going to be with those guys this summer. While he was on the team last year, they did not uh, get a medal while they were overseas for FIBA basketball going to be on Team USA with Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Stephen Curry, and so many others, where he's going to be able to pick their brains too. Even though he is where he is and he is one of them already, being in that atmosphere for a month and a half with those players, picking their brains uh, and, and being the next one, that's going to be something even better for us to watch as, as fans to see what he does next season with that Minnesota team. Yep. I'm with you. News of the day brought to you by Truemark Financial Credit Union. Check out truemark.com slash PHLY. Stop in your local branch to learn more about the credit union difference at Truemark Financial today. Uh, it's a shame with all the injuries in that Knicks series because it just it just went upside down. It, it has. And the, the way that they run and with the injuries hitting New York, the way that I'm speaking of Indiana, but – yeah. Speak, uh, the way that Indiana has runs and the way that New York plays, they need all the healthy bodies that they can they can have out there on the floor. So missing OG Ananobi, most importantly, that that's a huge one because of his defense and he can't get things going offensively. But just his his defensive ability to slow them down in the way that they like Indiana to run the floor. So right now, you couple that with the minutes that Tom Thibodeau played those players in the in the Sixer series, and then playing them the amount of minutes that they played through the first now four games, well three games since the game four was a blowout. The, that that was going to take a toll eventually if it became a closer game where you had to uh, again have those bodies readily available to to beat this Indiana squad. I still believe that New York is the better basketball team, but to your point, the injuries are, are taking over and knocking them down. We're giving Indiana a chance. So they're a little more healthy right now while they have some some nicks and some bruises. Tyrese Halliburton, not healthy, but he's showing up these last two games specifically in Indiana. Now the question is, can he and that team take it on the road one more time where they had chances to win in games one and two? They did not. Now you come back. Uh, you, have, you have that momentum going for you. And, of course, the injuries going against New York. Can Indiana find a way to, to win a game on the road? So you have uh, that series. Boston's going to beat Cleveland. We know that. And then it's uh, the, out west. I, I love the, the Dallas OKC series. I I, I like the OKC, yep. but, man, Dallas playing some good ball. I mean, Luka didn't look right. He looked great the other night, though. I thought this was an OKC series also, like you. And, and then Dallas, the way that – the way that Luca and Kyrie are playing off of one another, and then you have the others now chipping in. Tim Hardaway is back. He's a little more healthy, so he chipped in in a big way in game number and, three. And then they're bigs like Gafford, right? Like That's State exactly Lively. Right. Well, PJ Washington. Yeah, yeah PJ, PJ Washington, yeah. big pickup at the trade deadline. Wasn't sure how this would play out. It's played out very, very well for them. <laughs> so he's 
He's found a home. So Game two was ridiculous. Guy. Yeah, Bagging yeah, threes. Yeah. And exactly. What do you have, 37? Yeah. Then, he, yeah. then he follows it up and plays well in game three. Yeah. And yeah. to your point, you got Lively, uh, who has been starting pretty much all season long, local guy. He's playing for Dallas, and he's he's still young, he's still raw with everything with the playoffs. But he knows his role. Daniel Gafford coming in off the bench, the other big pickup at the trade deadline from Washington for them so they have it going and again adding tim hardaway jr and his shooting back in it because maxi cleaver is out so his shooting is taken away uh jason kidd has done a really nice job but it's all it all starts with luka Doncic and kyrie irving and when kyrie irving is playing in this way this is the guy that's the top 15 player in the nba it's on it's no question about it and and he's playing some really good basketball right now they're in a really good place and to your point, while I do see OKC probably winning one more game, I think now, I think now I'm, I'm with you. I think Dallas is going to be the team that's in the in the uh, Western Conference Finals because of how they are getting contributions from everywhere. Dante Exum coming in, playing his role as a defender and a ball handler to just help out in that way. Uh, so that's a fun basketball team too. The Western Conference basketball is, is the playoffs are really fun between oh, those four incredible. teams. They're incredible. So I, I bring up the playoffs to, to then mm-hmm. take it full circle. And so what we've learned as we're building a team that has all kind of a, a clean kind of slate, like, you know, all the, you get Joe, you get Maxine. And what are we putting around you is the big question uh, for Maury. And what, what have we learned during these playoffs and how you attack the build? And I'll tell you, for me, and I know they're going to offer him a deal, and I get why they have to. But, I, you know, I'm not in love with PG, dude. I'm just not in love with him. I just He's question. playoff moments. It, while, while the playoff P thing is a fun attack, Paul George, because he hasn't coming up big in the playoffs in the postseason, he's had some moments. Of course, the Indiana days where he was at his best, uh, the 2021 playoffs in the Western Conference Finals against the Phoenix Suns where Kawhi Leonard was down. He was fantastic. He and both Reggie Jackson – uh, for the Clippers. And this season, it, it, at least he was the one that was the healthiest. He didn't have a great playoff run, but he was the healthiest. I'm not in love with the contract either, uh, but uh, we rank the, the players on the show because the one thing that we all recognize, and Daryl Morey said it in his uh, post-season press conference, he mentioned wings. And they're not going to be a lot available, and They're going to have to find a way to to – to, to get one of them, whoever them is, via free agency or trade. The names, of course, Paul George, Jimmy Butler, and we even discussed Brandon Ingram as a trade possibility. You're going to need one of them. Uh, when we ranked them on Friday, I believe it was, I did have Paul George first because of, while well, again, I don't love the contract. However, when we discussed the two-way ability, the shooting that's important around Joel Embiid, and Tyrese Maxey, because of course you don't know what else Daryl Morey is going to build for the other two starting roles. You need to have someone who can shoot the basketball in the no, mold listen, of he that wing. Fits the suit. Like mm-hmm. if I said to you, you know, try the suit on, he fits it every which way. Yeah. Yep. Except what's inside the suit, I it worries me, man. I just see him fail, and I don't I, know I, how interested he is to come to Philadelphia. And be in a cauldron and know how you have to win now. I almost like Ingram as a better fit. You got to trade for him, but I like it better in the sense that it, it, Paul George is a bigger name. And Paul George comes with, with a different set of expectations. Whereas Ingram kind of slides in, you know, after and beat him, Maxi. Yeah, I had him third. Liked the player a lot. Uh, I, I just I just question to your point when you say fit in the suit. I've also seen where Brandon Ingram has disappeared in moments where uh, I, I haven't liked no. it. He's a Tobias light, like or Tobias. You know he's got Tobias qualities at times. Like I, I mean, no lie. But again, and I get you know I just don't know you could count on between the health, between disappearing, between is he into it? I just don't mm-hmm. know if you know I don't I, I question that. It's a big question. Well, for where's, me. where's where's Butler fit into that for you then? If those two, where, where do you have Butler in there? I I hear I hear that it's unlikely sure. that Jimmy's he's going to use to stay in the to stay in Miami. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I hear. Yeah, 
But listen, you know, I mean, Jimmy's got the dog, right? So Jimmy, Jimmy wins. Jimmy, yeah, right. can, the only question with Jimmy is, a, you know, wh how what's he have left for how long, and can he stay on the floor? Yep, yep. So, so even with it, nothing's perfect with these players that we're talking about. It could have been the Siakam trade during the during the trade deadline. Could have been the OG Ananobi. They decided against it to to just attack the offseason the way that we're going to find out in June That's as early as the draft Siakam, or free agency. Siakam would have been it. Would have been perfect fit. Yeah, he would have been interesting. Uh, of course, the Knicks. I'm about factor, perfect, but yeah. where are they? Yeah. Where, where are they? I, I I don't know enough. You you read stuff coming from Toronto that it wasn't great on the way out. So uh, where where would that have factored into the decision to to trade him at the trade deadline? And I'd imagine that was something that they did talk about. But yeah, the Paul. I don't think anything is as you said. The mold, the suit, he fits it perfectly. But coming back east, he hasn't been back east since the. Since the Indiana days, does he really want it? Yeah, you, you'd have to imagine he wants to stay at home in Los Angeles playing for that team and for it not to work out and then settle for going now back all the way back cross country to Philadelphia, regardless of the relationship he may have with Embiid and Tyrese Maxey. Yeah, that's going to be something that he's going to he and his family are going to have to adjust to again. So I'm, I'm curious about that. But right now, today, if we start with those three, Paul George is the one. And is that enough? Is that good enough to your point of watching the rest of these playoffs? Can they win with those three as your, as your features in, in the postseason against any of these teams? How about the marketing? Remote, you got to trade for, but yeah. I like marketing. Danny Ainge, Danny Ainge is going to have you over a barrel with that. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, I don't. I, I don't see it happening because he's going to start somewhere in that four first-round picks – Maybe even five, some sort of pick swaps to go into the no, combination I'm talking about the player, of those first round I mean, picks. I, I think the it's player fits too. perfectly. Yeah, he, yeah. he's he's it just stretches nothing. it, oh, shoots slide it. Him, slide him right into that starting five, right next to Embiid into that role, and in the shooting, the ability to put the ball on the floor. I, no worries. He's young. The contract is very very good. You re-sign him once Embiid is eventually finished or on his way out. That's why I think it's worth. I, I, that's why that I would do the four. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be hefty, and if you you would do the four, and then Danny Ainge would try to push you to five. I know, <laughs> because I know. That's what Danny Put Ainge does. Ainge. Yeah, yeah. I, know. Right, I still right. hate him. Hate him from back in the day, brother. Sure. I could talk all day, man. I love just always just chop it up. Talking hoop is the best. Always fun, man. Thanks for having me. Best I of the girls. It. I will. I will. Thanks, man. Thanks, buddy. We all silly like the mayor.